Ruth here, part three. Okay, so if we finally have gotten to being a bilingual school teacher. I taught in Redwood City, California, Hoover Elementary. All my chiquititos were hablando español, and I was teaching them reading, writing, math, science, everything in Spanish, and then we had an English time where I was teaching them in English. This was a transitional program to kind of keep them from falling behind in content while they were learning English. Phenomenal program. We were producing bilingual, biliterate kids by sixth grade. Fabulous. So I went from teaching into a clinical position because I wanted to further my education. And that door swung open for me because I was bilingual. I didn't have the degrees I needed. I didn't have the training that I needed to take that position. And they basically said to me, listen, we've got this grant from Stanford Lucy Packard Children's Hospital that we really need a bilingual clinician for. We'll train you if you'll go back to school because we need your Spanish skills. That door flew open for me when I was unqualified and untrained because I spoke Spanish. So I went back to school and got my master's in special ed. In the process of learning about different disabilities that we have, me personally, I got to diagnose myself. For the first time, I realized I do not have difficulty with visual processing, which is all they ever knew about dyslexia when I was a kid. My struggle is in an auditory sense. I have a very weak connection between sound and symbol. So if I ever ask you to spell your name, it's because I'm visualizing how I would spell it so I can see it. And then I have a greater chance of remembering what your name is. So the immersive model of being absolutely bombarded with the sounds while I'm creating the visual for myself is how I had to learn Spanish and doors swung open for me. So when I had my own children, one, three, and five, I was desperately seeking a program for them where they would become bilingual and biliterate. And I didn't want them to have my experience. Oh, it was painful. I had to work hard for this. So that's where sombrero time came from. I literally put a sombrero on my head, invited a bunch of kids over to teach them Spanish in my garage, did that for a year, and was invited by a principal to design a program for his school. And since that, since then, we have been contracting with schools, developing curriculum, and that we're just about to launch. So that's my story. So follow us on Facebook, Sombrero Time, Twitter, and uh, feel free to email me, ruth at sombrerotime.com. Would love to hear from you. Hasta luego.